friends. It's non-stop raining at the ranch. Check it out. The crops are loving it. The canal, the irrigation canal is loving it. My racetrack is starting to become full of water. Even though I did tons of drainage work this year, uh, the, the rains have been torrential and it's just filling it up. Check it out. This pit right there, 20 foot long, three to four feet deep. This runoff pond over there is full. Amazing, this is gonna make for some good jet boat and mud videos for sure. Yesterday, I had my new skid steer dropped off. Check it out, right in there. Uh, this is a 2016 cat I got delivered from Finning. Uh, it does have the Torque Robotics setup. I did get the remote task installed. Uh, some things that regular viewers know uh, and new viewers may not know is I actually have a back injury from when I was much younger. Couple of degenerated discs and so riding inside a skid steer, yes it is fun and amazing and I love doing it, can cause problems for me. <laughs> So instead, I got a robotics setup, and this will help me get back to work, because when you have a track, you have to maintain it, and without a skid steer, pretty much impossible. Let's go have a look. Here we go, tires are all brand new, but covered in mud right now. Inside the cab, you guys have seen all this before. Here is the remote area. This is an emergency stop button and a reset button. You can see up on the top now there are two lights, whereas in the uh, beginning video that I had there was only one. But now that I purchased it, everything was pretty much installed and ready. Key, yes you can install, <laughs> you can operate it from the inside. That was one of the main questions people had was, can you still get inside? Do you have to have these mechanical arms down if you're uh, running robotics? And the answer is nope, you don't. <laughs> So there you go, inside the cab, it's got its lockout area, the screen, everything. Just a pretty much a, a normal skid steer, a nice skid steer though. Lots of viewing, uh, now that they've got these smaller arms, my other machine had wider arms as well, but that's part of the D-series is like they wanted to have lots of visibility so you could see everything. And uh, that's it in a nutshell. Somebody said the other day, too many buttons. And I said, no RC man has ever said that. <laughs> so I don't have uh, the RC on the machine turned on right now, so it's going to give me a no signal, right? It's not connecting on the signal. Uh, all of these are the internal controls, like the emergency stop, uh, the engine, uh, if there's an issue with the engine, if there's an issue with hydraulic pressure, if there's an issue with tipping, if there's an issue with battery, the whole deal just goes through all the temperature gauges, as well as if you're you're on snail or crawl if you're on a, a, a bucket level like as you're floating along you want a floating bucket uh, and I was just reading about this last night so I hope I'm actually on point this is the function button which basically gives you a second function so you'll see here this is the bucket coupling that's what I did over here was I uncoupled the bucket so uh, remote bucket <laughs> uh, I love the RC Adventure show. oh hey what are you doing over there did you know I was filming right now the show. Oh man, <laughs> that's my beautiful wife that totally supported me getting this. Thank you, baby. We love you. I love the new toy. I can hardly wait till we get to have cocoa and shovel our walks. <laughs> yeah, hot chocolate uh, while we're moving snow. That'll be nice while it's super freezing. Uh, so here we go with the snail's pace if we want just to kind of crawl along and of course the parking brake. So over here, this is where you've got all your hydraulic controls. This up here uh, is your horn, beep, beep, uh, as well as different hydraulic controls. You've got your buttons on the front as well. Uh, so really this is the arm and the shovel and this is your movement to the machine. So here, let's just turn this off for a moment. All of your like electrical accessory and everything all over here and here is where your snail pace is controlled which means you can set the throttle to a certain uh, speed and not have it go past that speed, right? Perfect. All three are in place. Let's get to work. And ready, first position. Parking brake is engaged. Look at the top. So the green one is saying that everything is a go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the ignition. I'm gonna 
remove the parking brake. Notice I started it in idle. Good to go. Notice both lights on top are flashing, so that's saying that the parking brake has been uh, deactivated and everything's a go. Throttle. So I've already had it warmed up. I've had it running a few minutes before I turned the camera on, so I know we're good to go. Let's just show you that there's no one inside, of course. This technology has been around for quite some time. Originally it was used for uh, the military in clearing bombs or sending personnel into areas that really humans couldn't go. Uh, clearing sinkholes in construction, farmers, different things like that, you know. And for me, with a back injury, it definitely helps me get back to work. Here we go. I've taken off my control box just to give you more of a first person view. So I'm going to turn off the parking brake. Everything's good to go. You can see I can move it now. So forward is how you actually couple onto the bucket because there's two lips at the top of the bucket itself. Lining it up right there. Give it a gentle nudge. As I raise it, I just move forward a little bit. There we go, lifting it up, and now when I tilt the controller, I can lift the bucket. I'm just going to move the bucket down a little bit so we're not putting any pressure on anything. There we go. Coupler itself is just a simple lock. Oh, not in. No, it is. That was just the stopping point want to confirm that it's locked. I see one side isn't locked or is it? No, it is. Everything's perfect. So let's go ahead and uncouple it just so I can get you up closer so you can see what's going on with the coupler itself. People have asked me about safety and are there any safeguards look at how muddy it is out there whoa so here's the perfect place to talk about it come check this out remember this button I was talking about this is an all stop button so if this button gets hit watch what happens everything shuts off immediately so it's good to have a kill switch we also have an indicator here that the the kill switch was basically activated the only way i can get around this i'm just going to turn this off and show you what happens even if i if i do turn it off okay and the machine is safe and out of harm's way this is off i'm going to turn the key to the on position still showing me that there's an error here so i'm going to take this push it down and turn it to the side 
release it, everything's good, and the primer starts again. So here we go. Start it up, good to go. Okay, so the other safety feature they have, just in case there's a medical emergency, or I get bumped, or I fall in a hole, whatever, is basically, they call it an inclinometer. Inclinometer. I call it like a gyro. <laughs> it's a sensor overall, basically, that when this actually tips to 45 degrees, or a 45 degree uh, outage, here, I'll turn off the parking brake. Everything's activated, good to go. Pretty neat, eh? Okay, so here we are, everything's good in an open area. If something happens to me, it turns the parking brake on and shuts it down to idle until it returns to normal. Parking brake still on, cannot move the machine at all until I turn that off. And then once that's off, everything's good to go. So there's that one. So emergency stop button on the controller, 45 degree shut off just in case something happens. Even if you lean forward too far, you hear it? Lean forward too far, shuts down. Idle goes back up, waiting for me to get back going. So there you go, that sensor is there. Also, if you have a signal loss, it'll do the very same thing. It just stops, everything's put on park. Except I've got pretty much great signal out here. See, 45 degrees. <laughs> my signal is amazing out here, so I've got lots of giddy up and go. So that'll do it for today, my friends. I got more coming up. It's too messy, too sludgy. I need some more practice. I want to couple some forks on here, maybe lift some pallets, move some stuff around here, uh, different rocks and stuff. So stay tuned. If you want to hit the subscribe button, you won't miss anything with me and the, the new skid steer here. And of course, the awesome Torque Robotics uh, remote task setup system that I I have so yeah until next time guys if you like it hit the thumbs up button leave a comment below and I will see you in the next RC adventure now get outside and have some fun with RC no matter what size it is bye a little wave goodbye <laughs> I look forward to digging some more Woohoo! man look at the mud Crazy! Skid steer! Let's go!